Welcome to season four of my podcast, Between Us, Stories of Unconscious Bias. I've added the title Between Us, as I thought Stories of Unconscious Bias alone was a little too remote. My hope was that the podcast would feature honest and personal stories that raise awareness and educate. Between Us, as a main title, underlines the intimacy while reinforcing the sense of our collective involvement. Since launching it in early May 2020, the world has again changed. George Floyd died, and Black Lives Matter, which had started in 2013, has become more popular and more widely accepted. Identity politics and culture wars have deepened in the UK and the US. Meanwhile, in other countries, people are being marginalized for their religion and beliefs. The need to understand the subject of unconscious bias has taken on ever more meaning and resonance. As always, I am so grateful to all my wonderful speakers who share their often brave stories and allow us to understand the nuances of this very important subject. Thank you for listening. Hello. People listening in India, and I suspect many others around the world, will not need an introduction to my guest, Amish Tripathi. Amish is a diplomat, author, and columnist. Since October 2019, Amish is the director of the Nehru Center, the cultural wing of the Indian High Commission in London. Amish has been listed among the 50 most powerful Indians by India Today magazine in 2019. Forbes India has regularly ranked Amish among the top 100 most influential celebrities in India. Amish was also selected as an Eisenhower Fellow, a prestigious American program for outstanding leaders from around the world in 2014. Amish published his first book in 2010 and has written nine books till date, just in the last 10 years, think about it. His books have sold five and a half million copies and have been translated into 10 Indian and nine international languages, which is why I'm saying most of you probably know who he is. He worked for 14 years in the financial services industry before he started writing. But for those of you who do not know about Amish's books, his books are about Indian mythology. And often people say at a very basic level, they are adventure thrillers. But Amish is much more than a writer of thrillers. He is known for his philosophical bent and challenges the readers to question some fundamental thoughts. For example, what is evil? What constitutes an ideal society? Are there masculine and feminine ways of governing? His most recent book out in, 20, in December 2020 is Dharma, Decoding the Epics for Meaningful Life, which he co-wrote with his sister, Bhavna Roy, in which they do just that. They help us understand two words, dharma and karma, and how these can help us have a more meaningful life. So unlike my usual podcasts, what I'm going to do is explore with Amish his learning of unconscious bias in the context of his writing. Because I think his philosophy, his ideas of evil, his talk of dharma and karma, all of these would have taught him many aspects of unconscious bias. So I am so pleased that Amish has agreed to speak with me today. Welcome, Amish, and thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thank you for having me, Smita. Absolute pleasure being here. So, I mean, before we even discuss your learning and your writing and so on around the headline of these two words, when we think of unconscious bias, Amish, what, what do you understand by that? You know, if I'm honest, this is probably not something that uh, that would have been an issue in the dharmic way, at least in the ancient times. I'll tell you why. Um, in the dharmic uh, traditions, which is essentially Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism, there is no concept of one universal truth and that anyone who doesn't follow that one universal truth will burn in hell for eternity. That that concept doesn't exist. There was always the understanding uh, of uh, that you as a human being will only see your perception of the world. Uh, your observer bias will define what you see. This is fundamentally different from the Abrahamic approach where there is a concept of uh, one truth and that everyone has to follow that one truth and you have to have faith in that one truth. Uh, it's not driven so much by a search for wisdom, but by a, a, a stand of faith. Now, I'm not saying any uh, way of life is better or worse. Every way of life has its own uh, strengths and uh, areas of improvement. 
but in the dharmic way and in, indeed actually in all the ancient pagan ways as well uh, most uh, of the ancient uh, world was pagan you know idol worshiping nature worshiping goddess worshiping atheists uh, the concept of multiple truths was very fundamentally there uh, is this that india happens to be perhaps the only pre bronze age quote unquote pagan culture that has survived till today So when we talk about real way, dates, the, but real dates, can we put some real dates on this? How many thousands of years old are we talking about when we're talking about pagan culture and dharmic truth? Anything All beyond two right. thousand years. Essentially, where the concept of one truth, which everyone has to follow, uh, that concept did not exist. Uh, there was your truth, and there was my truth, uh, and the perspective was only the divine can understand one truth. uh and how do we know we haven't understood the one truth we are still here we are not with the divine right uh, so the deep understanding that obviously i will see the world with my bias is is there you know as it says in but the but that, that's that's really interesting amish because if you were saying obviously that i because i have not got into that high level of deep truth and i will see i will we will all have unconscious biases is what you are saying if i would just simplify what you just said it is, it is natural. natural it is human the key th- it is human the key thing the key thing is you have to bring it from your unconscious to your conscious do you think that you will ever exist without a bias that is silly i mean i i for example i'm a very patriotic man i love india right uh, now someone can uh, question me why don't you love germany why don't you love france now is this a bias Yes, it is, and I'm it's aware it's a bias. It's a conscious bias. bias, though, but it's a conscious yeah, bias. Yeah, it's a conscious, but that's the key but thing. But it's a it's a whole idea of the implicit or the instinctive. That's what I want to explore in your understanding of what this looks like to you, in your experiences th- of writing. My thing is my belief is that India, in a sense, lost its way in the last few centuries when we started forgetting our ancient wisdom, because. if you actually start believing in one truth then unconscious bias naturally comes in right but if you if from a fundamental young age if if you understand that there is your truth and there is my truth then you are aware that there will obviously be a bias as long as it's there in your conscious consciousness in your conscious part of your brain you can actually do something about it right the biggest uh, problems happen uh when you actually think you are unbiased and when in fact the bias is there uh one of the things that i find this is the first time i'm living abroad i have to tell you honestly um i'm an india boy i've grown up in india and I've, as you know i've grown up in a deeply traditional household you know with all our uh, ancient traditions at home at home we spoke in hindi uh even now to my parents i speak in in in, you know, in shuddh pure hindi and mm-hmm. we learned english at school now mm-hmm. this is the first time i'm living in the west and one of the things that strikes me when i come uh, to the west that even those who call themselves liberal they have a bias as well <laughs> a deeply unconscious bias what does that look they, like then <laughs> for because example in a way if they believe that their their definition of liberalism is the one truth which everyone has to follow right where does you know it's it's one of the things which we third world people would find a little bizarre that uh, that many western countries invaded iraq invaded libya to quote unquote improve them and i'm like you know it makes no sense to us third world people that you killed a few hundred thousand people to improve their lives like what sense does that make right Now, where does that unconscious bias come from because even the liberals believe that their definition of liberalism is the one truth and everyone around the world has to buy into that one truth which is an unconscious bias now where does But this surely, come from surely that's not Sorry, necessarily just a, a western concept it's it's happening in india one of the things that i keep arguing for uh, in india is that because our our ancient uh, traditions are are being forgotten and our ancient wisdom is being forgotten you see uh, the, the the public square uh, debates in india as well are falling into that same paradigm you know there is the right and the left and you have to prove loyalty to your tribe and you have to you know you have to win over the other person that is not the ancient indian vada uh, traditions 
it's not the ancient indian debating traditions and all of this comes as you know i, I love the subject that you've spoken of it comes from an unconscious bias it comes from a belief that my truth is the truth uh, i love that but i'd like i'd like for you amish to get, to expand a little bit more by kind of perhaps sharing a story a real life story perhaps either in something that you've written where where you can explain that to us or uh, an experience however you like because i want to explore this in in with some more with some more reality to it from okay, just me, as a concept let me explain this to you in in uh, in one of the most uh, simple and basic ways not in an intellectual way but in the way rituals uh, in india the way the masses do it in india and this this shows the ancient traditions some of which still remain alive thankfully in india uh, you are of course aware of lord kartik you know mm-hmm. the uh, the son of lord shiva lord shiva is the god i worship uh, and lord kartik is obviously also a god uh, now in uh, the south india where you are from uh, smita a uh, lord kartik uh, is uh, married in fact he has two wives right in north india uh, where i'm from lord kartik is a bachelor okay aha uh-huh. uh, and hence his name kumar kumar in ancient sanskrit remember means bachelor he's bachelor yeah right yeah now uh, and uh, the this is just one example the tradition is so strong in the north that women will not even enter a lord kartik temple uh, because he's a bachelor right uh whereas in the south women happily enter lord kartik well, he's temple. got two wives after all so why not yeah. my mother a deeply traditional and hence very wise woman she in a north, in north india in a north indian Kar- lord kartik temple she will walk in i uh, sorry she will not go in but in a south indian lord kartik temple she'll happily go in and pray out there now what is this in a very deep intuitive way teaching all of us indians there are multiple truths and it's okay right That's and what clever. does this do sorry i it i makes... must pause that yeah because i i just want to get that sentence that you've just said that in a deep intuitive way there are multiple truths and that is the brilliance that your mother and many other people are subliminally embedding in us about trying to appreciate our unconscious biases in a positive way that's Absol- what you're saying absolutely and that is a part of our traditions you know uh, so for example uh you know the the in our uh, in our traditions in the mahabharat uh, if uh, if uh, gandhari ma who is a human being can question and even curse lord krishna who is a god right and lord krishna does not punish her that how dare you curse god in fact he humbly folds his hand together into a namaste and says whatever you say mother right what does that show again that actually it is not so much about what you have faith in it is about your actions in life and since gandhari ma behaved honorably through her life she was a human being she had as much spiritual power to even curse god himself now again what does this show that actually it is about your actions and it is it is not about having blind faith one of the key things uh, that blind faith does is it pushes your conscious bias into your unconscious bias and that's where uh that's where one of men, many of the negatives of biases come from you know the binaries of life my side is good the other side is evil do you know in vedic sanskrit the language of the ancient indians there is no translation for the word evil for the english word evil i was going to ask you what is evil there is because you talk about that yeah, and that's and, and in fact one of the things i speak of that if i was writing in sanskrit i wouldn't need to explain it the concept is there clearly but because i'm writing in english where unconscious biases are there because of the culture english again i'm not judging every way has its strengths and uh, areas of improvement uh, but uh, in in vedic sanskrit for example there's no translation for the english word evil there's no translation for the english word blasphemy there's no translation for the english word judgment you know when you judge someone you are you will go to heaven you will go to hell those those concepts didn't exist so they didn't have those words and what does that do it gives the space for all of us to discover our own truth and when we understand that we will automatically understand that someone else has the right to discover their own truth as well even if it is different from my truth and that makes so much sense but i i i want to 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 kind of expand this a little bit more onto the headline of of unconscious bias because in your books you also talk about 
masculine and feminine forms of governance yeah. um, to explain fundamental ways of how a society can be run. You talk about something called ideal society. I mean, I don't understand in terms of our own unconscious biases. Um, surely you are then contradicting that concept and idea of everybody's own truth. I mean, what is ideal to you may not be ideal to me. Aha. So could you expand a little bit on that? And that is precisely what I discuss in the Ramchandra series, my, my new uh, uh, series of books, because is an ideal society a destination or is it a journey? And Aha. what are the choices that you have to make? Right. Uh, when I speak of masculine and feminine, it's not about men and women. It's about two different approaches to life. If I was speaking in Sanskrit, I would use the term Suryavanshi and Chandravanshi, uh, which, you know, do not carry the, you know, the, the gender. Uh, the, uh, so Lord Krishna was the, uh, ch the Chandravanshi approach to life, the feminine approach to life. Lord Ram was the uh, Suryavanshi approach to life, the, the masculine approach to life. Uh, and there are uh, strengths and areas of improvements in both ways. India, for example, the way we are right now, and for most of our history, India has been more a Chandravanshi uh, way of life, a more uh, feminine way of life. Uh, Japan, for example, the way it is, and I'm, I'm not saying completely Suryavanshi, completely Chandravanshi. You have a measure of both, but which part is more dominant, right? Japan, for example, is more Suryavanshi, right? And therefore, then, what are the choices that you make? So one of the things, the, the things that become clear in this is if you go for a more Suryavanshi way of life, it will be more law-abiding, more just. But is there at times a conflict between law and freedom? right? And that's one of the debates I have in uh, the first book of the Ramchandra series between Lord Ram and Lord Bharat, that uh, if there is a conflict between the two, which side do you choose? Lord Bharat, for example, is, is more Chandravanshi. So he's very clear, freedom above all, right? If that means you break the law, then you break the law. Whereas Lord Ram is more Suryavanshi. He says, no, the law has to be followed no matter what. Because uh, uh, over the long term, it leads to a fairer society. And these are, these are complex uh, issues which don't have easy pat answers. Because their debate happens over a background of uh, you know, of, of, of a juvenile uh, who has committed a horrific crime, right? Uh, and uh, Lord Bharat wants that juvenile punished, the death penalty. Lord Ram says the law says that juvenile cannot be punished, so he cannot be punished. That's a law, right? Uh, Lord Bharat's approach is justice is more important than the law. And if in pursuit of justice, I have to break the law, which means I have my freedom to break the law, for the cause of justice, I should do it. Again, there are no easy answers in this, right? I mean, that's it's the point choice, you're making. What choice do you make as a society? What is more natural to you as a society? And the thing to understand, whatever choice you make, you have to get deep inside your uh, inside your soul and your unconsciousness. Any choice that you make will have some strengths and will have some weaknesses. There is no perfection. There is no perfect place. There is no utopia. Among the biggest crimes in humanity have been committed by those who actually believe in this perfect place, in utopia. Which doesn't exist. That belief in utopia means you believe in binaries. Exactly. But there is perfection and the other thing is pure evil. But when you real and that only emerges, the, what is the core thought which leads, which ultimately ends out there is the belief in one truth. But if the core thought itself is different, there are multiple truths. So if and I were to if I were to summarize what you're saying, and just for my own understanding, essentially when you're talking about unconscious bias in relation to to the books that you the multiple books that you have written, it's really very simply, let us be reflective and let's think about who we are and how we see the world, rather than just saying you are good or I am bad or or the other way around. I mean, we want to be. We want to be very simple in how we are. We want to be inclusive and open and understand what is within us that influences us without us realizing it. That's what I'm, I'm understanding, a kind of understanding what you're saying. It's, that... it's, it's one of the concepts, not the only concept. Sure. Because, look, the, the, the core thing in the, in the dharmic way is not unconscious bias or one truth. The core thing in the, the what is the root of the word dharma? Um, 
it's a sanskrit dhatu sanskrit root called dhru that which binds that which holds together that which uh, balances so all the dharmic religions are essentially driven by by balance right uh, it is not faith based whether you are faith or not is is a real, it's a personal choice it's not core in the dharmic uh, religions the core is dharma uh, one of the sanskrit lines i love most is ati sarvatra varjayit extremism of any kind should be avoided mm-hmm. right and therefore then when you come to the concept of dharma you have to consciously live so that you try and get as close to dharma as possible in all aspects of your life this of course applies to the concept of one truth because moment you start believing in you know in one truth then uh, unless you can consciously control yourself extremism kind of comes as a natural by product right because anyone who doesn't believe in that one truth you'll say is false you know uh, uh so how do you balance yourself that this is my truth that is their truth uh how do you live consciously in every choice uh, that you make you have to find your own swadharma right my own dharma so for example you can't have a simplistic rule that uh, uh non violence is is good non violence is good for us ordinary citizens right we have no right to take the law into our own hands but non violence is not the dharma of a soldier standing at the border sure right uh his dharma is to carry out violence because that's what he is that's uh, what he has to do yeah that's what he has to do that's his no, purpose but... because he has to protect those behind him so there are no uh uh you know it's not about uh, a set of rules for uh for everyone for all time it is what are the principles for you in this life to make it successful and for that you have to live consciously you have to explore dharma uh, but so you've talked about dharma but i also know that in your books you talk about another word which is used very freely and easily in the west unlike the word dharma which is karma uh, um and I mean you know you are living in the west for the first time in your life mm. and you've only lived in India but I have lived in London now for many years and mm. there would be many people who are not of indian origin who would mm. use the word karma in their sentence or mm. you know that you know that's that's a, so my very limited understanding or simplistic understanding of karma is what you sow so shall you reap mm. but i think from your perspective it is a little bit more than that Could it's you it's far more complex than that mm-hmm. because what you sow so you shall reap uh, it uh, it goes into uh, uh, the, 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 that the universe will uh, will punish you for bad deeds or uh, uh, you know give you uh, uh, kudos or benefits for good deeds right um the world becomes far more complex because then it becomes what is a good deed or a bad deed mm-hmm. right uh and that comes back to the earlier point that you were that comes back to the oh. earlier point where you have to be conscious of what exactly. you're doing exactly mm. killing is a bad deed right but unless you're uh, a soldier but if you're a if you're a national security guard person or i don't know who the commandos are in the uk who say who's 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 uh, who's killed a terrorist and who's therefore saved you know uh, a various innocent people is that a good deed or a bad deed mm-hmm. now here it becomes far more it's a very simple yes no but what if uh, life becomes far more complex you know like one of the examples i speak of when discussing dharma is uh, in my uh, in that ravan enemy of aryavarta ravan is you know in modern indians have also uh, because of the colonial experience the turkic colonial experience and the british colonial experience have imbibed many of these you know good evil uh, concepts and we uh, we kind of post facto apply it to our ancient uh, texts so modern indian see ravan for example as this great villain right whereas our ancient texts actually saw even ravan as a nuanced uh, uh, character because they saw everything in nuanced terms our our ancestors now in my book on ravan i speak of a of an incident which uh, uh, ravan is told of where there is a lion uh, who's been who's lost his pride so a new lion came and uh, defeated him 
and as normally happens in prides uh, whenever a new lion takes over the pride he kills the cubs this actually this actually happens in the jungle he kills mm-hmm. the cubs of the old lion right it's natural uh, it's it's uh, the law of the jungle now what he sees is an old lion with three of his cubs what that meant was that the old lion has lost his pride he's lost his lionesses but he somehow managed to escape with his cubs okay mm-hmm. who are young who are starving this lion is old he is not the best hunter anymore and across the the meadow he sees a a a, a, a female deer right a doe and he sees those cubs and he says if i kill one of them you know i can feed my i can feed my children and so the hunt begins okay now in w- one of the the cubs of the deer uh, is a runt not able to run fast and it looks like the lion is about to uh, pounce on him and and kill him and uh, the mother deer slows down and kind of inserts herself in between the lion and the cub in a way basically sacrificing her life right to save her cub now uh, the lion comes close to the deer and is kind of confused because the female deer has just stopped like waiting to be killed and then i didn't i don't say what happens after that because it doesn't matter whether the lion kill the deer or not the key thing in this if you see from the concept of dharma all right uh what should the male lion do should he kill the deer to feed his starving children and hence be a good father or should he be a good uh, soul and grant life to a magnificent mother who's willing to sacrifice her life for her children and what does dharma say what what should he do right so this is not simple and one of the things that gets discussed which our ancestors spoke of in the field of dharma it's not always about what you do it's about why you do it right so if the mother deer is sacrificing her life because she's a coward and doesn't want to fight life yeah that is adharma that is not right right but if she is sacrificing her life to protect her children that is dharma it's the same action but the reasons are different if the Absolutely. lion is killing just because just because you know he is a monster and he is just killing for pleasure as many human that beings is, do yeah that is adharma that is wrong but if the lion is killing because he has a responsibility to his children he has to feed them then that is dharma right it's far more now in this where does cause and effect come in the universe uh you know what you put in you get in return the mother deer is being magnificent she's sacrificing her life for her children what does she get in turn for it she dies if if the lion does kill her is that then as simple as you get what you uh, you reap what you so, sow I... whereas and one of the problems in one of the questions that arises in that approach is how do you explain good things happening to bad people and bad things happening to good people and you know in the west the normal answer i have heard for this is a very unsatisfying answer it is god's ways are mysterious in what sense does that make that's not a frankly that's not a satisfying answer okay uh so then how do you explain this and that is where the field of dharma makes it more understandable the key challenge with the path of dharma as compared to the path of you know right and wrong and one truth is that in that one truth way you are in a sense treated like a child where the father in the form of the god will come and tell you what to do so actually it's an easier life you know you just do what you're told to do and you can blame someone if things go wrong you can blame your family you can blame society you can blame god himself whereas in the path of dharma you're treated as an adult right you are taught that this is how the universe works uh it's complex this is actions and consequences now you think about it and do what you think is right as lord krishna tells arjun in the bhagavad gita in the 18th chapter one of my favorite lines in the in the bhagavad gita is where lord krishna tells arjun that i have given you knowledge most profound now your task is to think about it and do what you think is right <laughs> so he doesn't behave like i am god i have told you you better do this otherwise you will burn in hell no because then then that's like you're talking to a child right when you're talking to an adult you say look i have given you wisdom now you think about it understand the 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 the, the law of action and consequences and then decide what you should do be an adult i like this approach because this 
the way i see it it's a very empowering approach it is okay there is there is no one i can blame for what has happened in my life not society not my parents nothing no not god no one everything that happens in my life is Are the choices you make is me is me yeah. right from yeah. choices of my previous life and this life right therefore then everything is in my hands i'm not some powerless uh, person now if i suffer in life i will take that as a consequence suffering happens it's a part of life i've had a very difficult last 4 5 years uh, in my personal life and the way one sees it okay this is a part of life one has to fight it and move on there is no point blaming oh society did this you know god did this how does that help so own your own your own actions is essentially what you're saying exactly so but but to do that you have to understand the nature of the universe you have to understand the nature of dharma that's one of the key things if you're doing karma without dharma right uh then it's just blind action it's not conscious action right uh so karma by itself means nothing right karma has to work in consonance with dharma karma is action dharma is uh, dharma are the principles which kind of hold the universe in balance whole society in balance so um, if i know that dharma is in balance then i cannot treat uh, uh, mother nature as a resource to be exploited i have to see her as a goddess to be worshiped because i see it in balance which which doesn't mean that i swing to the other extreme and you know go live in the jungles and say everyone has to stop you know uh, uh, using uh, energy and using cars how are we going to live then on the other extreme but what that also means is that i shouldn't swing on the other extreme where i don't care at all about what's happening to mother earth right again so then your actions are conscious because you're looking at dharma all the time you're looking at balance all the time so if you were to this is just so brilliant and i could keep talking and talking with you forever but i'm aware of the time as well and i want to i want to capture all all of these a very important points that you've made in terms of of life lessons if you like so if you were to summarize for us listeners um how do we manage our own conscious biases then how do you do it i mean you said personally that you've had you know some personal issues in the last few years and yet you you've learned not to 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 hold other people responsible for your actions but what's the trick how do you manage that personally it's actually just about conscious living uh and uh, understanding uh, the nature of dharma understanding how it works and some things may appear unfair some things may appear fair now if you're conscious of life you will see that there are times when the universe has cursed you with uh, with uh, with far more uh, you know suffering than you should have got but if you're conscious you'll also realize that the universe at times has blessed you with far more happiness than you deserved so let your gratefulness kill your resentment right <laughs> again this again it. this comes from this comes from the concept of dharma and balance right uh the key thing if i can if if it has to if we have to kind of it's it's very difficult to boil down ancient indian wisdom because we are not a part of one book we are a part of an entire library with millions of books right so you have to find the path that works for you but if i have to boil that down to a few things one conscious living uh you know be conscious of what you're doing not just blind karma right uh secondly ati sarvatra varjayit which is avoid extremism of any kind you know there's no consciousness that extremism of any kind should be avoided either the left or the right right so that's the second thing avoid extremism of any kind uh third there is you know give up concepts of blasphemy or you know that no one can be everyone can be questioned no one is beyond questioning that was one of the key things of the ancient indian way uh and if all of this has to be summarized and put together into a word which you can explore then that word in the indian way is dharma dharma is which kind of it's a very complex concept you know you can keep exploring it for lifetimes but dharma is that is is kind of like the the pole which holds all of this 
together all our various philosophies together you know in the indian way for example you can be an there's nothing wrong with being an atheist for example you know uh, uh, of our major you know ancient schools of philosophy you know there are 12 major ancient schools of uh, philosophy in you know in in india how what has been classified now to four religions hinduism buddhism mm-hmm. jainism sikhism mm-hmm. of them five of them are actually atheist schools matlab they don't believe in a creator god right there's nothing wrong with being an atheist either because what was important is not whether you have faith or not what is important is do you understand dharma and is your karma in consonance with dharma so it's a philosophy exactly rather than the religion and that's actually very absolutely. key absolutely it is a not a key thing learning. Of, yeah it is not a thing of faith it is about exactly. a, a seeking of wisdom of living with wisdom it's not about having if faith is not important whether you have it or you don't have it it's your personal choice totally it's about living with wisdom yeah you don't and have to have a god you don't have to believe in god but believe in you. yourself to 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 you know to summarize and and for the listeners who don't who first time in their lives are hearing the word dharma perhaps in this podcast it is very much about challenging our own instinctive opinions questioning it and learning to to believe in ourselves all spot of on. that all of that is what's really important spot on spot on <laughs> one of the key things in the ancient indian debating traditions is that you must engage politely right uh, you must engage with those who hold a completely opposite uh, point of view not because you want to convince them because you want to learn exactly and and the concept used to be satyam bruat priyam bruat which is speak the truth but speak it with love the the importance of good manners when you are debating the entire concept was how will i grow unless i hear a different point of view i have to hear a different point of view that's the only way i will grow absolutely very very wise i could keep talking forever but i should end it here amish amish tripathi thank you so much for teaching us and sharing your learning on how what we simply call unconscious bias but it's so much more than that it's about dharma it's about ancient indian philosophy and for those of you who have not read amish's books those few people maybe please do go there pick up a book there are multiple languages depending on which language you're most comfortable with and that i'm sure you would understand and begin to understand this whole idea of dharma under so many different stories and guises amish thank you again Thank you. Thank you Smita. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for listening to my podcast Between Us Stories of Unconscious Bias. I'm Smita Tharoor. If you like this episode, please do share with a friend or colleague. It's only by sharing that more people will know of it. You can find out about previous episodes and the next ones by following me on Twitter or Instagram @smitatharoor. The next episode will be in a week's time.